What's going on, everybody? It is January 31st. We've got a eight-game Wednesday slate coming off of, I don't know, one of the more interesting slates we've had in a while. Um, I'm not happy about it. I'd imagine some people are either very happy or very sad. So I finished with 324 and did not have James Harden and took the Eric Gordon goose egg. I couldn't be happier with my lineup. Uh, it's just incredibly frustrating. Like, I couldn't be happier with nailing Costa Kufos. 20% owned, you know, he got like 11x. Like, I nailed it. Very happy with Tolliver. Very happy with Anthony Davis. Very happy with Reggie Bullock. Happy with Hazonia. You know, Drew Holiday was hot to start. I'm really surprised that he tailed off towards the end, but like 37 isn't going to kill me. Rubio absolutely destroyed it. Russ was not great, but at 40% owned, like I'm not the only one that was on that. Just a goose egg. Straight zero. And that straight zero not only gives Harden points, but obviously puts me behind the eight ball. I'm very happy with my process. I'm very happy with where I landed. I wouldn't change a thing. I couldn't be happier. When I saw that Eric Gordon had zero in the second quarter, I was like, oh, this is brutal. So I, uh, I opened up the box score, and I was like, oh, he's played 10 minutes. He's got a straight zero line. And then I looked at his plus minus. Houston was losing by five, and Gordon was plus five. So in the time that he played those 10 minutes, Houston was winning and Eric Gordon hadn't done a single thing to register on the box score. So when I tweeted out paging Eric Gordon, at that point he was, in my opinion, fine. He was just like out on a normal substitution pattern. And then like 45 seconds later, Eric Gordon was just out, and that sunk everything. And if you didn't have Harden, you know, making... If you didn't have Harden, the chances of you having Eric Gordon were pretty high in my opinion and well not just my opinion just in general and that's like a, that's a hundred point swing right there like the difference between us right there is a hundred points you know and like I can't just swap Harden in there that's not how it works but you know Harden put up 60 11 and 10 he almost had a, he had a hundred points on DraftKings he was the stud you needed and I mean, you needed to avoid the the landmine of Eric Gordon. Oddly enough, I actually finished in the money in the dribbler, <laughs> which is hilarious to think about. Eric Gordon was only 30% owned, so I guess that helped me. But I'm super happy with the Costa Kufos play. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my process yesterday. This is one of those things where you really need to evaluate against the scenario of the way that things came about. And I'm happy. I had lots of guys clobber value. What are you going to do? Thanks, Eric Gordon. You unknowingly put up a zero and sank 50% of lineups and gave James Harden the push he needed to uh, put up 100 fantasy points. Let's just get into it. First up, Indiana Pacers hosting the Memphis Grizzlies. Pacers 105.5 implied total uh, would be 10th. They are 7-point favorites at home. So Oladipo is 10-1 on FanDuel and 9,300 on DK. Really? I didn't refresh that before. 10-1 seems uh, pretty expensive particularly with Turner now back. You would need 50 from Oladipo. Um, I'm not seeing that at all. Man, my projection system is so dramatically different on Oladipo than his like season-to-date numbers. They're just so long. It takes so long to recover because so much of his life he has been not exceptional. Crazy. But either way, I, I, I wouldn't like Oladipo no matter what. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I'm not interested in Thad. And this isn't a very good game to be focusing on to begin with, but I will take a look at Darren Collison. Uh, Collison would need 28. Uh, he had 26 in the last one, but a couple 30 pointers plus the 50 pointer. Um, he's just a simple three for me. Uh, Sabonis is at 6,100, which would be 30. He's done that in four straight and five of six. Um, you know, Turner should get some extra minutes here. I've got him in for 27. He's supposed to be starting, but Sabonis is still in play. Sabonish. <laughs> Sometimes I, I can't even fathom the things that come out of my fingertips. Miles Turner, 5,800 on FanDuel. Needs 30. Um, I don't hate it. That's Miles Tuner. What did I just do? Okay, there we go. There we go. He's a three. And there's nothing else on the Pacers that I want. Grizzlies, 98.5 implied total. Uh, that is dead last on the slate. And like two-thirds of the team are questionable. So some of these guys likely won't be playing. Um, so keep an eye on that. But you shouldn't really, really be focusing on the Grizzlies to begin with. Jarrell Martin continues to be a value. Uh, 5,000 on FanDuel means he needs 25. He had 30 in his last one. He's at a 27 point or a 31. Um, he's perfectly acceptable. I don't want Marcus Saul. Tyreek Evans at 8,400 is. I'm not really looking there. I don't want Ivan Robb. I just I don't want anything from this game. Um, Andrew Harrison on DraftKings. is fine 4200 um, you know 24 gets you 6x if he's playing it could be close let's get out of this trash game we'll go to magic and the Lakers uh, this is a line that is not out yet we don't know anything about Aaron Gordon at this point but I have the magic as a one-point favorite and this should be a relatively uh, high scoring game so something to focus on for fantasy Now, I have Aaron Gordon playing. Um, at this point, it should be no surprise that my projections don't exactly love Aaron Gordon. He's at 8,800. There is no way I would play Aaron Gordon at 8,800. He would need 44, which he's done once in the past two weeks. But I'm not, uh, not terribly concerned with taking him. If you want to have him on DraftKings... Go right ahead. He's a four. Fournier at 6,300 would be 31. <sighs> That's probably his upper limit. Just a four for me. Alfred Payton, 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. That's uh, 36. I mean, he can get there. He had three straight games or right at this number or in the 40s. I'm inclined to like him. But can't get too wild there. Um, I do like how much he gets to the rim, though. Jonathan Simmons, 4,900 on FanDuel. Uh, 5,300 on DK, actually. Terrible. Oop, that three's not supposed to go there. Simmons is just a three. And there's not really anything else I'd be interested in. If Gordon's out again, uh, then Hazonia looks really good on FanDuel at 4,100. Not as good on DK at 48.
So to the Lakers we go. This one I need to pay attention to. Not that I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, but I like the Lakers side of this game a little bit better. So Lakers would be 108.5 implied total, which would be fourth. Um, when this line shakes itself out, they'll both be pretty high. Brandon Ingram is 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Well, it took so long. Okay. So we're looking for like 34. Uh, hit it in the last two. Uh, I think he's starting to feel a little bit better. So I like Brandon Ingram a lot there. He's more like a two and a half to me. Um, and he looks really good on DK at 6,300. KCP I have no interest in. Um, he would need 28. I'm good. And Kuzma, 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. It's uh, 26. Really quieted down now. Lots of games where he's just not getting it going. Um, coming back down to earth. But still a three for me because the magic aren't very good now I do want to look at the Lakers here the magic are a pretty terrible rebounding team so I want to see Ingram a decent offense or pretty good offensive rebounder Julius Randle's not bad Nance is pretty good that's good to know. Randall, 6,600. You're looking for 33. Game fits him really well. Um, he's hit 33 in three of his last four. I'd be more than okay with Julius Randall. And then Larry Nance at 5,600. 5,100 on DK. That's uh, 28. He's done that one, two, three times in his last seven. Nope, make that four. Yeah, four times in the last seven. I think the game fits him really well. I've got him at 25 minutes. Should be right around where he needs to be. Yeah, I'll probably have... I would expect to have at least one Laker and potentially two, but there's some value in a later game that um, almost assuredly will end up covering some positions that the Lakers do. Hawks now. Atlanta Hawks, 104.5 implied total is 12th, and that is, uh, they are two, point, two and a half point underdogs at home against the Hornets. And I'm gonna like the Hornets a lot, I hope. I might actually say to take Dwight Howard, which means that he'll probably be uh, super shitty. Because <laughs> I don't seem to ever get stud centers right. I can get budget centers right, but the cows come home. I don't know, it's like a mental block. Dennis Schroeder, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Looking for 38. Hit it in the last one. Didn't hit it combined in the two previous. Um, not the best matchup for him. How has he been in his career? Because he's probably played Atlanta like, or he's probably played the Hornets like fucking t 20 times. Uh, who are we looking for? Shooter. Yeah, he had 11 against them. He never played well, so I'm not even looking at him. Kent Bazemore, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Let's just say get to 30. He did it in the last one. Um, he's hit 30 in four of his last eight. Uh, not that I love a ton of stuff in this matchup, but um, I do like Bazemore there. Prince has been playing a little bit less minutes in some of these games. Uh, sometimes he's dropping down in the mid-20s. I've got him at 28 here, but I'm not super stoked about it. At 4,600, it's not like he's been playing very well, so he's just an ignore for me. Uh, Ilya Sova, he might actually get a little bit extra run tonight. 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. You need 25. Uh, he's generally in and around that mark. 
So I'm okay with it. He's a four because he's Ursan Eliasova and he's on the Hawks. But and then John Collins uh, in the perpetual. He's good, but doesn't play enough minutes. Roll. Now, Hornets. This one's interesting. No Marvin Williams, so there should be some value out there to be had. Atlanta, absolutely terrible across the board defensively. Hornets 107, implied total is 8th. First up is Kemba. Um, 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK, so 40 plus. You know, he's done that 1, 2, 3, 4. Does that a lot. Um, I like the matchup. Uh, it's hard to not like most of this. I think that I would want to end up with Kemba. I'm going to say that he's a two. He is a little expensive, but this is about as good of a matchup as he's going to get. And let's see how he's been playing against them in his career. He put up 44 a couple nights ago. 43 earlier in the season, seems to just be steady, gets his, um, isn't going to sink you. So if I have any trouble finding two point guards to like really naturally make my lineup work, I'm probably just going to lock in Kemba and build around that. Not that I'm like locking in Kemba, but there's something to be said for the steadiness of it, to just set it and forget it. Forget it. What am I, I'm trying to sell a fucking rotisserie chicken cooker on cable television. Dwight Howard, 10-2 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. What did Dwight do against the Hawks? He had 60 against them uh, a couple nights ago. But, I mean, he's just been out of his mind lately. Salary has gone up like two grand. Um, you need him to get to 51. I mean, he's been doing it like crazy. It's so hard to pay that freight. I'm going to say he's a three. I, I just can't get there for him. And I, I want to see how... How much does Marvin Williams matter to Dwight? I think that's important to look at. Ooh, and NBA Wow. Didn't even cross my mind. So we want Williams on. And I want to go to the Hornets here. So Marvin Williams on the court. Grab that data. And then Marvin Williams off. We'll go lineups. Alrighty. So, not really good for Walker or Howard. MKG and Batum and Jeremy Lamb have all been a little bit better without Marvin. I'd say Jeremy Lamb sees the. I mean, it's a, it's a tiny boost to his performance, but a boost nonetheless. Maybe an extra half point. Um, but what I want to see is sort of how they play. So when Marvin Williams is on the court, they've got a plus two differential, middle of the pack offense, and a pretty solid defense, 106.2. When Marvin Williams is off the court, minus 2.8 differential, offense creators, defense largely stays the same. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, Marvin Williams is going to be playing with most of the starters and rotations, particularly Kemba, who drives almost all of the positive aspects of their offense. Um, so that is a little interesting to see. When Marvin Williams is off, they just shoot incredibly poorly. I think it really constricts their spacing. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. That doesn't really change much for me. Batum at 5,800. You would need 30. Um, he's done that three times in the last eight. Was close in the last one. I'm, I'm okay with taking a peek at him. I'm going to like a lot of Charlotte. But main thing I'll like out of Charlotte should be Frank Kaminsky. Uh, he's 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Should be getting some extra run with Marvin Williams out. Um, I know that's kind of tricky because he is Frank the Tank, but at 4,000, you got to take that shot for a guy that's um, playing that kind of minutes. So I'd go, I'd be a little bit more excited for him if he had been playing better, but he hasn't really been, Jesus all that good to begin with. Um, my projection system seems to match his uh, performance this year. But there's definitely some upside in that $4,000 price. I can see a very particular stack at Power Forward tonight. MKG, 5100 on FanDuel, 4100 on DK, which is just ludicrous. Um, he would need 25 to hit value on FanDuel, and that would be 6x on DK. Uh, when he does get value, it's always in like the high 30s. So let's say Michael Kidd Gilchrist is a FanDuel 4 and a DK 3. He's so close to being a DK 2, but he's just not that kind of player. If he had a higher usage, like somebody that could take advantage of that price, I would have a, a different thought process for it. But otherwise, I would take a look at him almost assuredly on DK. And then the only other guy to take a look at would be Jeremy Lamb. I could see him getting an extra minute or two because of the Marvin Williams injury, particularly if they decide to go smaller and you know, do something like Kemba, MKG, Lamb, Batum, and Dwight. Like, I can see that lineup happening. Uh, but Lamb is at 4,200, which would be 20. I mean, he gets there sort of generally speaking, so I would be interested in that. That's a lot of time in the Hornets. To the Nets we go. Brooklyn, 101.5 implied total is 14th. They are 7-point underdogs at home. Um, against the 76ers. Why is James Webb not showing up for the Nets? That's eh, not important. Nobody gives a shit about James Webb. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that there's no Rondé Hollis Jefferson and that D'Angelo Russell is sitting out on the back to back and that Karis Levert is back. So, those are the assumptions going into this right now. Obviously, things can change. Carroll at 5,500 uh, would need 27. Was in and around there last night in short minutes. Um, nobody really played anything big on this front end. <sighs> um, I'm okay with Carroll, but he's just a four. Spencer Dinwiddie, 6,300. Expected more out of him, but I also expected a couple more minutes, so... He needs 31 for value. I think that's probably a little too high. Although, without D'Angelo Russell, that is kind of interesting. Let's, without looking at everything, let's look at the Nets with no Rondé Hollis Jefferson and no Russell. I'm sure there's somebody else that I'm missing that's going to pop up there, but I don't really care. Most of these guys are all still on the team. So, Dinwiddie scores 1.05 FanDuel points per minute. So he would still be right around that mark. Um, he's a four then. It's just not a good matchup. Uh, I don't want any part of Alan Crabb. Karis LeVert at 5, or 4,900, sorry, I was rounding up, would be 25, um, sure, also just a 4. Now, uh, there's 
expectation is that Tyler Zeller won't be playing tonight and did not play last night. Minutes have been shrinking, and they've been giving more minutes to Okafor and Jared Allen. So if Okafor plays 24 minutes at 3,600, he's definitely someone that needs to be looked at a little bit, particularly in this uh, revenge game narrative that could be out there. I'm going to say that he's a 3 um, nobody's ever had any real questions about Jaleel Okafor's offensive ability. So in the past two games, he's played 24 and 25 minutes uh, at over a point per possession, or point per minute. So, you know, if he's playing 24 and gets you 24, you know, that's a pretty monster value. Granted, you're getting Embiid and Philly, but um, if anybody's going to not give a single shit about Embiid and Philly, it's probably Jaleel Okafor. <laughs> And then finally, Jared Allen. Same sort of scenario. I just expect him to play less minutes. These are guys that you need to pay attention to, though. Because they're starting to hash that out. And uh, I can see Jaleel Okafor's price being like 4200 4300 in like three or four days. And that'll sink him. So let's go to Philly. Sixers. Um, 108.5 implied total, which is fourth and uh, they are seven-point favorites in Brooklyn. I like it a lot. It's hard to not like it. Um, but let's dig in because there are very specific things to like and not like here. So first up is Ben Simmons. 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. What has his price been doing? Yeah, he's up. Ugh, I don't like that at all. You need 45 out of Simmons, which he's only done once in that monster game um, on the 24th, which was against who? Chicago. Okay. How's he done against Brooklyn this year? Have they not played yet? How is that possible? Sarge doesn't miss games. How is that possible? How many times are they going to play in the rest of the season? Don't they play four times? They must only play three. I don't remember how NBA schedules work. Um, I don't have any interest in Ben Simmons. Um, I'd be shocked if I end up with him. I don't know why I'm even putting him in there. He shouldn't be a four. Embiid, though. 10-5 on FanDuel, 10-4 on DK. Um, he's going to be pretty popular here. Uh, Brooklyn Centers. That's not where that goes. Brooklyn Centers get... Absolutely roasted. Um, it's a great implied total. Uh, he's a two. He's He just should be exceptional here. Everything fits for him. Uh, another reason to pay attention to Okafor and Allen. Um, the Nets do like to go relatively small sometimes, which ends with them playing Rondé Hollis Jefferson at the five. I'd like to see how... Okay, so they don't have that... Oh, I'm on the Hornets. I was like, he's not even there. What am I saying? Circling back to the Nets just for a point. When they do like to go small, it's with Rondé Hollis Jefferson at the five. And if Rondé Hollis Jefferson is hurt, um, that sort of limits their ability to do that, which funnels back some of those center minutes to... Um, Okafor, Zeller sometimes, or Allen. But you can see, you know, they played a decent chunk of time with Rondé Hollis-Jefferson at the five. So, stuff to think about. There's probably situations where they're classifying other people as fives, but if they're not going to be playing Mozgov or Zeller, you know, there's a lot of minutes to be had there. Bobby Covington at 6,200 would need 30... Um, man, he's been all over the place lately. He's a three for me just because of the matchup, but what does his chart look like? I should move that chart. It's starting to get, like, outlandishly gigantic. Robert Covington. I typed it right. Screw off. Covington. Yeah, look at that. Mid-December, just so bad. Points, he got down to 
This area is like 0.6 to 0.7 points per minute. That's it's so atrocious. Anyway, uh, Sarich, 7,000. It's just too expensive now. Um, he needs to be down in like the 6,200 range. So I don't have any interest in Sarich. Um, TJ McConnell, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. I would like him, but I'm, I'm nervous about the minutes. So he's been playing shorter minutes lately, and that's with Bayless out. Now... Bayless, I have expected to play tonight. I'm assuming that the minutes are going to come off of some combo of Justin Anderson and TLC. I just I don't know what that sort of... When they start to get healthier, how the minutes are going to shake out between Bayless, McConnell, TLC, and Justin Anderson. So we haven't had them all healthy uh, for a while. So I like TJ McConnell because I have him at 28 minutes. But it's something that I'm going to pay attention to all day. You might see a change in his minutes. He's going to pop up a lot on the optimizer right now because at 4,800, or at that minutes level, um, he's going to stand out. But I don't know if that's real. We shall see. That's all I need from Philly. So let's go to Cleveland. Cavs. 108 implied total is 6th. They are 3-point favorites at home against the Heat. And the Cavs now will be without Kevin Love. Out like 6-8 to eight weeks with a broken pinky on his left hand. Which I'm sure Cavs fans just love. Get it? Love? LeBron, 11-9 on FanDuel. 11-1 on DK. Put up 37 last night. Um... He needs 60 for value. Ah, uh, this is a terrible matchup for him. What's his history been against the Heat since he's been back? Gets to that 60 mark when he plays it. Um, he's just a four, though. I. You've really got to be making some uh, assumptions with the way that he's been playing. I don't think that Love. It's going. To, I don't think that's going to help them positively. What happens to their offense when Kevin Love is not on the floor? I assume it craters. Well, not craters, but you know what I mean. So, 112 offensive rating just in general. When Kevin Love is not on the floor, offensive rating goes up really okay hmm. didn't see that coming okay I see you no thanks on JR uh, Isaiah Thomas 6100 would be 30 I can't do it Jay Crowder, though, should be a beneficiary of some additional minutes. Um, he's just a three, though, because he's Jay Crowder. Uh, Tristan Thompson, 4,200. You're looking for 20 and change. Um, the minutes are going to be there for him, although it's interesting to see how much Channing Fry will play. But the guy that I want to look at most here is probably Dwayne Wade. 4,100 on FanDuel. You only need him to get to 20. Had 36 last night. Um, if he plays in this back-to-back, -back, he looks really good. They could be looking at him to create a little bit more on the second team now. So. Go to Miami. Heat, 105 implied total is 11th and they've got about as tasty of a matchup as they can get all their prices are right where they need to be that is a sea of red interestingly enough for the heat but cleveland is the arguably the worst defensive team in basketball so we'll see how that goes josh richardson at 6400 needs 32 uh, he's done that in the last two and in basically six of his last eight 
so clearly he's uh, a person to focus on. Uh, Wayne Ellington, uh, Cavs give up a ton of threes. Wayne at 4,700 would need 23-ish. Um, they're the team that could get you hot, so also a three. Nobody jumps off the page because of their salaries, but Dragic needs 33. He's at 6,700 on FanDuel. Uh, hasn't really been there at all, but if there's ever a, uh, a team that could make point guards look a little bit better, it's probably the Cavs. I mean, I, at this point, I just kind of need to list everybody. James Johnson is at 5,600. He's a three. Tyler Johnson is at 5,000. He's a three. All these guys look fine. The only guy that I don't really have any interest in is Whiteside. 8,100. And I probably should. He needs 40. Um, put it up in uh, his last game. He's had four games like that. I know that's ridiculous, but everybody's sort of priced where they need to be. They just all have pretty solid matchups. I'd say that if I had to rank these guys in terms of value against each other, I like Richardson, then Wayne, then Tyler Johnson, then James Johnson, then Dragic, and then Whiteside. Celtics hosting the Knicks. Celtics 108 implied total is sixth, and they are eight and a half point favorites at home. Kyrie is 8,900 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. Um, he needs 45, which he's done twice in the past two weeks. I think that price is just sort of too high for him. Horford at 7,100 needs 35. Been there tw three times in the past two weeks. Brown and Tatum both need around 30. Tatum's been a little bit better lately. Brown has been down. Hasn't had a 30-point game at all in the past two weeks while Tatum has gotten there twice. Um, just a four for me, though. I don't love a ton here. That's probably it, actually. Now, the Knicks, you know, awful, awful defensive matchup for them. Uh, Courtney Lee at 5,200 would need 26. I don't particularly love that, but let's take a look. Done it a bunch of times recently. It just it's really hard to, to like anybody against the Celtics. Porzingis 8700. Um, so you're looking for 43 he hit value last night, um, and he's hit it one other time in the past two weeks. He should be able to take a bundle of mid range shots. Celtics will give that up, but there are situations mm, to roster Porzingis, and I don't believe that this is one of them. Still a four. I would fit him if I could, but I don't expect to have 8,700 left at power forward. Let's just put it that way. Only other guy I would be willing to look at right now would be Cantor. Um, he had 53 fantasy points last night, just a monster game. Always regularly around 30. Uh, 6,600 is a little pricey. I don't think that I would get there, but I could understand wanting to go that way. Terrible matchup, though. Two games left now. Blazers and Bulls. This one's going to be pretty interesting. Um, Blazers, 110.75 implied total is first. Bulls are not the best defensively. And the big takeaway here is that Laurie Markkinen is already ruled out for the Bulls, so that'll open up some interesting stuff. And then it will also be interesting to see whether or not Miritich plays tonight. So, first things first, I want to see uh, the impact of Markkinen defensively on the Bulls. 
so the Bulls as a team have a defensive rating of 109.4. When Markkanen comes off the floor, what happens to that defense? 108.2. So it gets a little bit better. Good to know. I don't know if you guys can hear that blender. Okay, so we'll start with Dame. Dame is 9,400 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. I liked him last night. I wish I would have stuck with him. 53 fantasy points. Uh, I ended up going with Westbrook instead, which sucks. There was a situation where I had Lillard and Beal. <laughs> Didn't hold it. Stupid, uh, stupid Chris Paul news. Wish that would have came out after Locke. <laughs> then I wouldn't have had Gordon. You need 47 for value for Dame. This is a great spot for him. Um, I would be more than okay with ending up with him. But I can't go too crazy because that price is pretty on point. Uh, CJ now, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. You need 40 from him. Um, has only done that once in the past two weeks. I'd say CJ for me is a... God, I can't type. Mick Column is a FanDuel 4 and a DK 3. And I definitely like Lillard more than McCollum. No real interest in Aminu. Evan Turner at 4,100 I guess is okay. And then Nurkic, 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. You're looking 31. Um, had a big one last night, 43 fantasy points. Got 28 minutes, which is the key takeaway there. Had only played 17 and 20 in the nights before that. Um, so if you're going to expect Nurkic to play, he looks really good. Minutes are the key tenant there. I don't really have much interest in anything else. So let's go to the Bulls now. So the Bulls have no marketing. As of right now, I have Miritich in, but that could change. But uh, there's one piece of value here that we need to just absolutely clobber. So Justin Holiday is 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. He'd need 27. Hit it in uh, his last one, but hasn't exactly been spectacular lately. Um, I'm going to say that he is only in play for me on DK, and that's minimal at best. He's a four. Jerry and Grant, 5,900 and 5,400. You need him to get to 30. Um, again, not really the spot I'm looking for. If I'm assuming Miritich plays, and for right now I have no reason to expect otherwise, he's 6,100 on FanDuel, should get some minutes, um, needs 30 for value, um, more than okay with it. Denzel Valentine, 4,900, so you're looking for 25. Uh, he's hit 30 in this past two. Um, he had a 27-pointer a couple nights ago as well. I'm okay with him as a four, but the, uh, the crown jewel for the Bulls tonight, Bobby Portis. Portis is 4,500 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK, so... Um, this is uh, very specific to FanDuel, but he needs 22. Um, he can do that in his normal short minutes, but he should get a bundle of extra minutes. He'll be the biggest value on the board tonight, um, barring any new news. He's the biggest value on the board currently. Um, I've got him projected well over uh, his value number on FanDuel. He's... In my opinion, of a one on FanDuel, I can't imagine not having him. Um, and then uh, I think he's just a two on DK because of his price. And that's more like a two and a half. But on FanDuel, he's going to be owned at a ridiculous clip. Uh, Levine, I have at 26 minutes at 6,000. He would need 30. Um, that just seems a little bit aggressive when you know that there's a cap on everything. And then finally, uh, Rolo is at 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. You have to assume that, like, if you think that Nurkic is going to play more minutes, you almost have to assume that Robin Lopez is going to have to play more minutes. They, ha they kind of need to run hand in hand. And Rolo only needs 20. 
Um, hasn't done it in the last three, but does get up into the 28s and 29s sometimes. So uh, he's a three for me. He might pop up a little bit on the optimization. Last game now, Suns hosting the Mavs. Um, taking a couple uh, assumptions here in that Booker is back and Chris is back. Um, as of right now, all those guys are questionable. I don't know if we'll get that news or not, but you know, have to move forward with this assumption for right now. 106 implied total is ninth for the Suns. So Booker, 8,000 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. He needs 40. Um, he's done that three times in the past two weeks. I like Booker if he's playing. He's a three. TJ Warren, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. He would need 35. Um, I like TJ Warren at that price. Also a three. Um... Josh Jackson, 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. If he's still getting minutes, um, that's a pretty decent price for Josh Jackson. Can't go over 14 or whatever every night. Who else? And then Marquise Chris would, is potentially back. He would also need 25, but He's only been, you know, he, he came back for two games, missed another one, has been missing a ton of time. Um, he's not somebody I'm going to focus on. Uh, if you want to, go ahead. Ooh, how did my cursor get all the way down there? Mark. I, don't, I guess I never liked Marquise Chris because his name's really tough to type. Finally, we get Dallas. Mavs. 108 implied total is six. They're two point favorites in Phoenix, and they've obviously got. One of the better matchups of the night. Um, Harrison Barnes is 6,600 on FanDuel, 67 on DK. He needs 33. Hasn't done it in the last two, but has hit that number in three of his games. Um, I like Harrison Barnes here. That should be no surprise. Uh, I, I feel the same sort of way about Wesley Matthews. Just in a matchup like this, you have to pay attention to these guys. But... Best value, I think, is probably Dennis Smith. He's 6,800 on both sites, which is, you know, pretty pricey to be perfectly honest. But he needs 34 to hit value. He didn't do that in the last two, but he has a 38 and a 43 in these past two weeks. I would guess that this is the type of game where Dennis Smith wants to show that he's the best guy on the floor. Um, I'm going to say that he's a two. I really like this matchup for him. He's going to want to go hard. Uh, if JJ Bure is back, I don't really want any Yogi Ferrell. Um, this doesn't seem like the type of game that Dirk is just going to want to play extra minutes in. But because of the matchup, I can't just not put them in here. So Yogi Ferrell is a 4, Dirk Nowitzki is a 4. Um, and J.J. Barea is also a four. And that is it. I'm really excited to see how this shakes out. Uh, because it's going to be a lot of Bobby Portis. And I'm curious to see where the value lines up around that. I wish Portis's number was better on DK because I like the idea of playing him, but I'd really like to play on DraftKings tonight instead of FanDuel. Two straight nights I've had a guy named Eric tank my lineup. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Alrighty. 50 optimizations, let's do it. Tons of Portis, tons of Wade, tons of Dennis Smith Jr., tons of Embiid. All of that makes perfect sense. Portis, Wade, Dennis Smith. Where do we end up? Let's get Embiid. Let's get Kemba. So that would leave me... Booker, Warren, Josh Jackson. Uh, that's probably a little aggressive. Booker, Ingram, Carroll, Kuzma. 
Yeah, I'd be okay with something like this. Kemba, Dennis Smith Jr., Booker, Wade, Ingram, Carroll, Kuzma, Portis, and Bead. I like that. Let's check out DK. It's going to be very different, I think. You didn't copy anything. There we go. I'm a little up in the air as to whether or not I'm going to go live tonight. Right now, leaning yes. Um, you know, eight games late, I should, but I kind of just want to not do that tonight. But right now, assume that I will be. And I'll tweet it out if I'm not. Alrighty, 50 DraftKings lineups. Lots of CJ. That's interesting. So Miritich gets the bump on DK, which makes sense. Dennis Smith Jr. holds. I'm okay with going with Okafor there. Huh. Lots of Ben Simmons. Now this is one I'm, I could have some interest in. Although that Portis number is really just not very good on DraftKings. But he's still coming up in optimal, so that lets you know like how little variability there is tonight. But Lillard, Wade, MKG, Miritich, and B, Dennis Smith, Portis, and Jaleel. I like a lot. All of you know that I can see that being a lineup where a lot of people go off. Alright. That is it, my friends. I am done. Um as per usual, I'll be back in the morning for Thursday's version of this video. What do we got going on tomorrow? What's the schedule look like? NBA schedule. Five game slate. Yeah, I probably won't go live tomorrow. So we'll go live tonight. We'll be off tomorrow. And we'll gear up for uh, Friday and the weekend. Um, Check out my projections at my website, joshengelman.com. You know, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Check out the DFS Sports Reddit. Uh, check out my Patreon. I'm all over the place. Um, but best of luck tonight. I'm not rostering anybody named Eric. I don't want to get another zero or, in Bledsoe's case, a three. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>